cottage cluster housing. Okay, so here we go. Um, it looks like people have already started posting notes to these. So I'll, I'll give everyone an opportunity to uh, weigh in. And again, um, if you're more comfortable saying it, um, speaking your comment, we're happy to capture that for you. Um, and uh, please let us know if you have any questions. This, this is Sue. Uh, I haven't quite figured out the post it, but I would just say, uh, just for sort of a broad statement, that uh, housing density in the urban area is, uh, and having all of the various options that are described is critically important to preserve resource lands and natural resources that are outside of growth boundaries and to keep those growth boundaries uh, compact. And uh, I guess generally we see this study, which is really, I'm so we're so pleased that this is underway, but as kind of a prelude to broader comprehensive plan update and uh, the need to really coordinate closely with the cities so that there's some equity uh, in terms of where affordable housing is located and that it, it's, it's located broadly throughout the county. Thank you, Sue. Just give everyone a few more minutes and feel free if you've got, if you want to again say something or questions or clarifications, we're happy to, to try to assist and answer those. Okay, it's me again. Uh, so one thing I've wondered about is if there were the, the uh, committee has discussed uh, inclusionary zoning, you know, it is reflecting on that slide that showed single family housing is really so much the dominant zoning, there's hardly a chance for them for there to be multifamily housing and and uh, so was, has that been discussed? Is there a recommendation around inclusionary zoning? I don't believe that one, it, inclusionary zoning is in a uh, part of the 50 strategies um, provided or in the draft recommendations. Um, I believe it came up and I just don't think it made the, the advisory groups um, and this, this list. Um, I know, I, uh, Jenna or even Ron from the advisory group, if there's anything more that you all recall um, regarding inclusionary zoning, please feel free to jump in. Um, yeah. yeah. This is Jenna. I'm happy to add a little bit more about what I'm remembering in the conversation. Um, it was definitely on the list of possible strategies to consider. And I think the group pretty quickly decided they didn't want to go with some like a mandatory inclusionary zoning and instead went with more the voluntary inclusionary zoning route um, with um, which could be some of the strategies could be considered a piece of that. So things like advocating for the multifamily tax exemption in the county could be considered one way to um, incentivize people to do that. Um, so that's what I'm recalling in terms of how the conversation evolved in, in the advisory group. Has that been found to be effective? That's a good question. I think that was kind of maybe part of the, con the discussion was that they hadn't heard that it was or didn't have enough information to, um, to move it forward. But we are still in a phase where um, we're still taking feed, we're of course taking feedback. So um, if that's something that you want to be considered, um, definitely um, let us know. Um, and Jackie, there has been a request. If you could make your screen bigger, could you oh, zoom yeah. in? Let's see.
too much. Is that good? This is better. Okay. okay. Well, um, if there's no um, more conversation that we want to have on these three, I'm just going to go ahead and move us on to um, the next round. Because I know what we're looking at, we're looking at both groups um, doing post-its. Um, oh. So uh, we're, we're seeing everybody's activity here. So maybe I'll wait a couple, a couple seconds to see if things kind of slow down on, on the posting. How much do, time do we have on each one of these pages? Jenna, what did we have about uh, 10? That's right. We have about 10 minutes per page. So, um, and, um, but we can always, if you think of something later, it can always be added. So, um, but yeah, well, we've got a, Jackie, we have up to two more minutes on this page if you okay. want to wait a Great. little bit longer. Sure. That sounds good. Thanks, Jenna. And Jackie, as to say, just so I'm clear, uh, these uh, strategies are being decided on, and you, and in this meeting, you're just looking for feedback on on these already established strategies. These these are draft strategies, so draft recommendations um, from the advisory group. So what they're what we're hoping to get is feedback from the public on what you think about them so that the advisory group can review that and use that to finalize their recommendations for the the action plan. So um, there's they're still um, they're, they may yeah. still make changes and revisions to um, these this list. Right, Jackie, I think we can move to the next slide and okay. um, and if anyone thinks of anything for this one, we can always we can always add, go back and add a post-it. Okay, so this is housing options continued. And uh, these three include, um, ag again, updates to the county's development code to expand housing um, development options. And the three here we have here is incentivizing a higher density residential development in the high density zones, um, including revisions to parking and open space requirements and a higher minimum density. Um, second, to explore opportunities to expand where recreational vehicles, RVs are permitted. Um, for exist, for uh, example, expanding them to be allowed in the community commercial zone in the county. Um, Adopt, and the last one here is adopt a visitability program to either incentivize or require more accessible housing to be built for those that may have mobility um, challenges. So I'll go ahead and move on to the slide for posting of uh, the notes. Any questions on any of these three strategies? Feel free to uh, uh, let us know. And as mentioned by Steve, if you're interested in more details of these or any of the strategies that um, we have listed, feel free to check those out on the uh, web page um, that you receive the link to go to the link to get to this meeting. It looks like I have a hand raised. Judy. Um, hi there. I'm the one who's lived in St. Louis. And I've also worked on a, a, a crime prevention task force. 
some many, many, many years ago. And density, the more density you have, the more amenities you need. Uh, you can't just crimp. And St. Louis is, was the poster child for how that can totally uh, backfire on you. Uh, so if you're going to have high density, you're going to need parks. You're going to need access to services. You're going to need, I ran into a developer up in Seattle who was not only putting in playgrounds, but gardens, community garden spaces. Uh, when he was getting uh, incentives for more density. So it's got to go hand in hand with livability. Thank you, Judy. And and yes, Dev, and that was something the advisory group has, has been talking about. Um, one of their objectives um, for kind of analyzing the strategies that have come up include, you know, guiding development of diverse housing options to areas with access to transportation and corridors and transit, um, and also for to support the development of those amenities in areas where you're going to add more housing. And we have another hand, Megan. Um, can you talk a little bit about the visitability program? Can you go into more detail on that? Sure. So um, this was something that has come up with our um, aging um, and disability advocates um, and even from the county's Commission on Aging um, regarding uh, making sure housing is developed that has limited um, barriers for accessibility. So examples of a visitability of uh, visitability is that you have at least one no step entry to your home. Um, doesn't necessarily have to be the front door, but it's an entry so that people that have mobility impairments um, are can can visit or those that live there can can enter the home barrier free. Um, other um, Others include the a bathroom on the first floor of the home and wide um, and, and even encouraging a bedroom, um, but definitely a bathroom for visitability on the first floor. Um, and in addition, wider um, doorways to allow um, wheelchair accessibility. Excellent. Thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. Hey, Society, I have a question sure. about um, where RVs are permitted. Um, can you talk a little bit about where this came from? Does this have to do with uh, people without homes living in their RVs right now? Yes, it's 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 the discussion is about you know providing more alternatives for those that are um, looking for alternative housing types. Um, that can't afford um, traditional oh, types. Thank you. So this is not, this isn't anything about mobile home parks or anything like that. These are literally RVs like uh, a real, like recreational vehicle that you can drive around. Right. Thank you. And I can just add, I think the sort of two pieces of this that have been discussed so far is, um, so for instance, RV parks are allowed in some commercial zones in the county. Um, so one question is, you know, could some additional commercial zones, um, could RV parks be allowed there? Um, mm -hmm. And then there is another piece about um, the county studying, allowing RVs. So maybe you uh, have a single family home, you know, should RVs, people be allowed to live in RVs in more places, um, you know, should, as well, such on individual properties. Um, to study that a little bit more to see what's going on in other places who are trying where that is being tried. Uh, as I say, I tend to agree with the comments made uh, under the RV section. I, I I don't see that as a anything really, a, at least not a long term strategy. I mean, uh, RVs are exactly what they are, recreational vehicles for people that have homes who uh, drive these things around the country and are willing to pay 60, 70 bucks a night at you know, uh, faraway places. And um, 
I, I don't I don't even see it as a business model for anybody who 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 has any uh, commercial property to open up an RV park in the middle of the city or middle of the county. Yeah, okay, it's not a long term strategy. Somebody posted. Thank you. So yeah, Jenna's gonna gonna post um, any other comment that we receive, so we can make sure that the advisory group um, receives that. Jackie, it looks like there was also a question about um, for in the higher density zones, the kind of incentives that would be offered and if those could help support community services such as parks and retail etc let's see which is this one ah thank you cool um jackie it's say the city of vancouver has opened up uh, safe car camping site in, within the city of Vancouver. And this is kind of sort of related to the RV strategy uh, is that, um, uh, again, I'm not, I don't know if it's my place to recommend, but it would be nice if we could do the same thing in the unincorporated county, if we had uh, space to permit temporary car or RV parking. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so what kind of incentives would be offered for the higher density? Um, I, I, I wanna go back and review the exact language. Jenna, do you have it um, at the top of mind? Yeah, um, so I think some of the things that were discussed um, so regarding this higher density and higher density zones was that, um, you know, the county has very little area that's zoned high density. So there's an interest in using that land more efficiently because we tend to get developments that are on the lower end of what's allowed in those high density zones. And some of the feedback we were hearing was that it's hard to, if you're building, let's say, um, apartments, um, the, the requirements between how much parking you need to provide, how much green space you need to provide um, often, and then how much housing you're trying to provide, you start running into challenges on how much you can build because of some of those requirements. So some of the incentives uh, would be um, possibly lowering parking requirements near high quality transit, um, and then also um, the way the open space requirements are set up right now is, you know, the more density you build, the more open space you need. Um, and so the thought was maybe to encourage more density, the focus should be more on the quality of the green space and maybe not the amount of it increasing continuously um, as more density is added. So I think open space and parking were the main things we've discussed so far. Thanks, Jenna. And I think if you if for if you're looking for a little bit even go a little bit deeper, I think our the housing audit that was done um, kind of provides some graphics about some of the challenges for uh, the higher density with those requirements. So um, feel free to go please check that document out for additional information. All right, and Jackie, my timer just went off for us to move to the next batch of strategies. Okay, great. Okay, our, our next batch um, has to do with affordable housing and include strategies um, 
um, intended to increase the feasibility of subsidized affordable housing for low, very low, and extremely low income households. So this includes expanding development opportunities for affordable housing, such as hotel conversions and permitting in commercial zones, um, studying tax increment financing and other funding tools to support housing, affordable housing goals, and studying fee reductions and development standard bonuses uh, to make regulated affordable housing more feasible. Okay, so we're moving on to um, these three for uh, feedback. So some of the conversations that the advisory group has had has to do with um, considering allowing um, affordable housing or housing in the some of the county's commercial zones. Um, and because uh, right now, currently, we um, residentials require are allowed, but there needs to be a single uh, first floor a commercial component, which can provide, uh, put some barriers in place for um, some affordable housing to occur in those zones. Um, so looking at um, opportunities for that possibility for consideration. Looks like there's a question, Jackie, on how affordable will be defined and slash required. So the, um, I think the county will be looking towards the guidance from uh, the state legislation um, and state programs that define that have define affordable housing, um, either through the Washington State Housing Finance Commission. Um, as well as some new definitions that are uh, have been added to state law rega regarding affordable housing and what that means. Um, so we'll be uh, taking the lead from the state on uh, utilizing those uh, definitions and, and guidelines. Jackie, this is Said. I don't know if I want yes. my comment put on a, on a posted note, but I'll just, just in general, just to maybe encourage more conversation. Um, sure. I am one of the people on the on this on the earlier surveys said that I'm a homeowner, and I've been a homeowner over ten years. My house payment and over the last ten years that I've lived here hasn't changed. So my house payment's what it was 10 years ago. And that's true for most people that get mortgages, 30 year mortgages and such. Rent, rent for a two bedroom apartment 10 years ago was $640 or so. Today, rent for a two bedroom apartment, whole uh, concept of affordability. We, we really have to um, understand what's going on. Uh, what's happened is people that are homeowners have been protected uh, in in the in this housing world of ours and people that aren't people that can't afford to buy homes have suffered more they're spending more and more portion of their income towards rent as rents have doubled in the last two in the last 10 years and homeowners aren't homeowners uh, first in fact not only has my house payment remained the same uh, I have uh, $200,000 worth of equity. I've built, uh, I've built a significant savings because of being a homeowner. So this whole uh, affordability 
issue and apartments and multifamily uh, is something that I think we, should, we need to look at in, in differently than we have. The disparity of wealth has had the most impact on our uh, housing costs. And uh, I don't know, I'm just kind of spewing stuff, but I, I, what I'm trying to say is um, I'm thinking we, we, all we should produce is affordable rental housing. We shouldn't have produced any market housing at all. Market housing is too expensive and it's just lining the pockets of people with, with more and more money that the rest of us don't have. I'll stop right there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Saeed. Thank you for sharing that. And we did get a request for uh, a link to that, um, the audit report that I mentioned above, if you want to do some more details about the multifamily and some barriers that could, um, and challenges that there are, I just linked that in the chat. Anyone else like to share or? Have any questions? How are we doing on time, Jenna, on this slide? I'd just like to chime in a little bit about funding. Maybe it comes up in other places, but um, sure. I think that uh, uh, this is really going to take money <laughs> to make this to make this work. And that I know uh, uh, Metro Regional Government a couple of years ago uh, passed a bond of oh millions of dollars to address the needs that they've identified. And I think there's a lot to learn there, but also I think we should not shy away, even though it may seem politically not a popular thing, but if this committee can identify what the funding need really is to meet the need, that that would, you know, the, the public ought to know what it takes to address the need. And uh, what, what are additional funding opportunities, and I, I would include uh, a local bond measure as an option. Okay, thank you, Sue. And I saw a hand before, but I don't see it anymore. Was there someone else that would like to, to say something? Judy, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah I was just going to mention the, the survey most of us are homeowners, most of us single family. However, uh, you know, life throws you curveballs and we all have extended families. And I want to second what Saeed was saying about affordability of rental. Uh, those of us who have, uh, have kids who are trying to get a foothold in the world are finding that they are just uh, completely completely behind when it comes to finding affordable housing and uh, bracing for the net re next rent increase. Those of us who are in my age group uh, are looking at the possibility of a debilita debilitating uh, illness that will change our circumstances. And we're gonna be looking for a different type of housing uh, at some stage of our lives. So uh, these are these are not fixed in stone. Any one of us could be in this situation uh, with a job loss or a serious illness. So that's something to keep in mind when speaking to decision makers, elected officials, et cetera. Uh, Definitely. Of, Thank you, Jim. End of speech. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Megan. 
Yeah, if you're taking a tally, I side with Judy and Saeed 100%. Those are absolutely valid points. The apartment rentals should be, all of them should be affordable for exactly those reasons. Uh, and I am a homeowner and I have been one for 20 years. Uh, and uh, the way that you can move up in home ownership is to own and sell and rebuy. But in this day and age, I don't want to sell because I can't even imagine trying now to. And, and if first time home buyers never get that opportunity, uh, you know, just look into the future. What does that mean? So put my vote in with Judy and Saeed. Yeah. Thank you, Megan. All right, and Jackie, my alarm just went off for us to move okay. to the next topic. All right. Okay, next we have our programs and partnerships. So these are strategies related to the administrative of county programs. So for example, our development permitting process, or perhaps where the county's role is to support or facilitate partner efforts to provide educational and or financial assistance programs. Um, the strategies that we're uh, looking for feedback here are listed, continue to administer state and federal funds to support housing development. So the county currently and already receives funds, reviews and receives and distributes federal funds um, to various community partners. So continue to do that. Um, streamline our uh, development permitting review processes um, by reducing the time timelines um, if possible um, to provide educational materials and dedicated staff to help developers uh, utilize affordable housing incentives. Um, that was um, uh, some strategies that were recommended from our affordable housing advocates on um, you know, having that, that as a resource to help them um, through the process. Um, as well as programs to help renters and homeowners uh, find resources and assistance. Um, market, uh, so that's market resources to educate. Uh, and lastly, uh, monitor the housing development over time and provide updates to support further regulatory revisions. Um, we don't know what the, the magic the, the magic button is going to be. Um, so you know, looking at um, at what we've changed so far over time and see how it's working and make modifications as, as needed as the strategy. So again, feel free to chime in with any thoughts or comments or questions. This is Saeed, I'm wondering what that first one means, administer state and federal funds. So it's it's kind of just to continue to support what the county and local governments do in um, advocating and you know continue supporting those resources that come down from the federal government and the state to provide for affordable housing or support services for um, low income households or uh, families in need. I would like to, I, I know we're not making recommendations, but on that on that one, uh, we it seems to me we don't really have a choice of administering state or federal funds. They, they The state decides to fund affordable housing and they give us money. The federal government does the same thing. Uh, what I think we could use is what, I think it was Sue who mentioned this earlier uh, regarding the Metro and the housing fund created in Metro. Uh, I would uh, encourage the county itself to uh, develop and support uh, housing development as part of its own uh, strategy, whether it's through bonds or um, whatever other means. Like the city, similar to the city's affordable housing fund. 
Yeah, not not developing uh, funding strategies is a policy decision itself, and it's a policy decision that means you're not going to meet the need. Yeah. Thank you, Sue. And, and feel free to let, let us know if you have any feedback or comments on, you know, the, the market, the, you know, resources to not only um, for affordable housing developers, but for um, to help educate renters and homeowners, if you have any ideas on, on how best we could do that at the county um, or with partner or, or, or in partnering with other organizations uh, to assist with that. As well as you know, our, the monitoring program, where we're really hoping to get some feedback on you know how that could work and ideas on um, on doing that monitoring. Um, Jackie, earlier on, uh, it might have been on the first slide, someone uh, said these strategies uh, aren't addressing people that are unhoused enough. Uh, I, I recall that reading that earlier. I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, so it seems we're, so far anyway, we haven't talked about strategies that to uh, bring people inside from being on the streets. So, I'm trying to see where it would fit in here. But. Yeah, pro um, yeah. Feel free to add comments wherever you'd want once as they come up, and and we'll make sure that we we get them to the advisory group. Um, we we do have um, a um, member of the advisory group that is uh, she's she's actually got another job and has moved, but she was the executive director for the Council for the Homeless. Um, so she was part of the advisory group um, working on these strategies. And we are also, Jenna, correct me if I'm wrong, we're going to speak with um, the Council for the Homeless and hopefully also receive more feedback and ideas on strategies as part of this phase of the project. Yeah, and I, yeah, I would just add, if, if you have a suggestion on what that could be, by all means, yeah, put it on a post-it. Um, okay. Or, um, or say it and we'll, we'll document it. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'll just, I'll actually, I'll go back to page one and post this. Sticky. Perfect. Yeah. And, and anyone also, like, if you would rather, you know, if you want to think about things after this meeting, you know, feel free to send um, us an email. Um, we'll, we'll take your feedback um, in multiple ways. So whatever is easiest for you. And that's a good question was um, how are renters participating in the housing option study? Um, you know, we, we, we'd love to hear feedback on how best to outreach to renters. Um, so if, if you have feedback on ways to communicate and get information out to get feedback, I would love to have that shared. We are working with the VHA, Vancouver Housing Authority, um, but any other ideas, um, we'd love to hear.
All right, we are just about at time, Jackie, for this. Okay. Set. All right. Uh, moving on to our um, next category here, which is advocacy. Um, so this is um, to advocate for uh, state legislative changes um, to allow strategies and tools that the county currently doesn't have available. So um, these include um, expanding the multifamily tax exemption. And as Steve mentioned, um, you know, currently counties aren't eligible, cities are, um, but the county does have a large urban unincorporated area. So um, advocate, advocate for that change. Um, fixing issues with the state's condominium defect liability law, as, as Steve mentioned earlier that uh, condos could be another um, option for a housing type option um, that may be a challenge um, to build and develop um, currently. So I'm gonna go ahead and advance to the uh, post-it slide. I had a question on the uh, uh, condo issue that is, that is suggested to be fixed at the legislative level. And it said in the report that it was because of frivolous lawsuits. And I just wondered if evidence was presented about frivolous lawsuits, because I know often there's consumer protection uh, measures that are put in place. and people not, might not like to be sued, but sometimes they may, may need to be sued. But I, I wonder what the evidence was. Sure, yeah, we could, we'll see if we can find something for you, Sue, and, and get that. Because I think condos are, are great. I think uh, that's uh, a, a way to enter the market to build the equity. Uh, it's a great option. Thank you. Sue, from what I recall hearing is that because of this new change, recent change in the um, condominium laws, uh, attorneys who advise condominium associations to organize and such are just saying, stay away because it's not, uh, it's not a safe uh, to, to uh, comply with the current laws on the books. It's, um, it's untenable. Nobody should be putting any more adding any more condominium units together. It's happening, but uh, I do know that the law is problematic from, not just from advocates, not just from investors, but for, even from advocates, it's, right. I think it's not working. How long did, was that, has that legislation been yeah, in place? A couple, I don't know, a couple of years maybe. Fairly recent, okay, yeah. thanks. Mm -hmm. I will say as an architect, I won't work on condo projects. I have been advised to agree that yeah, just too high risk. Oh, okay, but thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. I guess one other question sort of on this topic around advocacy is if um, if any of you are aware of other state legislation that um, you would like to see passed that could be added to this list, um, any suggestions um, of things that the county could be advocating for would be great to hear as well. Jenna, what do you do for the county? I work with Jackie in community planning, so also a long range planner. Thank you. Because I know there are a couple of different affordable housing uh, subgroups in the state who 
do legislative advocacy. So it'd be nice to uh, compare notes with the county. I work for the Housing Authority. Okay. What do you think, Jen? I know um, this only had two strategies, so we might not need as much time. And um, I know we're getting um, towards um, the end where we're, we also are opening it up um, to, you know, what's missing. Um, yeah. You think it's time to move on? I think it's time. I'm worried Steve's going to pull us back soon. So yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's do that. Okay. All right. We already got stuff here. So um, but this is kind of the free for all, and and as you've heard, and we've talked about uh, the strategies today. If there's anything that um, you feel are, is missing that you didn't hear that you were hoping for that you're interested, um, please feel free to leave that here. And also, we're you know if you you want to chat about it too, um, feel free to share, and we can we can talk. Looks like there's a question about how transit is addressed in strat the strategies. Yes, so I we definitely have um, some strategies related to um, amenities or or things that you want things or activities and things and amenities that you want near housing. So like we talked about before with one of the objectives being, you know, citing, if you're going to add more housing, make sure it's near, um, you know, places for a complete neighborhood or livability for people to be able to access things um, by alternate means of transportation. Um, so that was a lens that the advisory group was looking at these and, and, a, and a recommendation that is part of this. Um, if move forward is to to keep that in mind when you're you're thinking about adding housing, adding density, um, that you keep transportation in mind for that. Jenna, do you have anything to add to that? Um, there are also a few strategies that are tied to like potentially reducing parking requirements near where there is better transit. Um, for instance, um, so we've got some strategies linked to that as well. Um, I think parking, there's a lot, of, there's been a lot of discussion on how parking is really complicated because while there's an interest in reducing it for many reasons, that if you don't have alternative transportation options, that's really hard to do. Um, so there's been quite a bit of discussion on that and it links to some of the strategy ideas. One other thing I'd add, I, I see some great things showing up on the screen here. If you're um, if you have any specific suggestions on how um, a strategy might be developed to address some of these topics, if you gave a more broad statement, um, if you have ideas, um, I think the project advisory group would love to see those. So feel free to go broad, but also to go specific if you if you mm -hmm. have those specific suggestions.
I see a, a comment about multiple language support for all educational materials and community outreach and appreciate that. Um, we're, we're working to try to do better on that and working on translation um, of materials um, in uh, Spanish and Russian. Um, and um, we'll be doing outreach on that as well, um, but also open to more suggestions for that. Hey, it looks like we're going to get pulled back in just a couple minutes. So, okay. Yeah, near near wrap up time. Well, before we get pulled into the large group, I just want to say thank you um, for all of you for, for participating. Um, this was the first time we've used this exercise and um, thought it was a different way of uh, doing something a little interactive. Um, so thank you for being patient and um, playing with us with this. Um, and uh, we'll welcome any feedback on that as well if this is a, a tool that was helpful um, and beneficial. Um, but again, thank you for uh, participating in our small group today. Yeah, and I would just add, we're, we're going to share our contact information um, at the end that if any of you want to talk through any ideas more or talk to Jackie or myself um, about the project more or ideas. We we really are happy to do that. Want people to be as involved as you want to be. Um, and yeah, glad to just be in contact. Or if you have a group that you're associated with um, who you want us to come talk to, um, please just let us know that. Okay. This has been great, by the way. I really enjoyed it. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Thank you all. Okay, I think I'm getting the notice, Jenna. Do I? I is this up to me to, to hit the button? <laughs> okay. Looks like we got a few seconds. I thought I ended it, but I guess I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone must have had an option if they wanted to, and then it probably does.